Or Ukraine says it has liberated the area surrounding Kyiv as Russia's forces retreat. Meanwhile, in the south, Ukraine's strategic port city of Odessa has been hit by a suspected Russian missile attack. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warns this could be the start of a Russian offensive to seize the east and south of the country. Natalie Collada is tracking all the aspects of this story and joins us once again. Natalie, good morning. What's the latest? Good morning, John. Well, missile strikes hit the port city of Odessa this morning. Plumes of smoke, smoke pardon me, could be seen rising above the city. Russian forces say they were targeting oil facilities used to supply Ukrainian troops in, in Mikhailov, um, and we're waiting to hear if there were any casualties from that strike. For weeks now, the port city uh, has been of about a million people has been preparing for attack. The city's catacombs are being repurposed as bomb shelters. Meanwhile, Ukrainian forces have retaken much of Kiev and the surrounding area. And as they do, we are hearing rather disturbing reports of civilian deaths. Journalists have captured some of those disturbing images um, in Bucha, given the graphic nature of those images. We are not going to show you all of what we are seeing, but the images we can tell you show bodies strewn across the street. Some appear to have had their hands tied behind their backs, bags placed over their heads. This is coming from officials on the ground as well as The Guardian in the UK newspaper, the BBC, has says it has also separately confirmed the killing of at least two civilians on highways leading into the capital. And just uh, a little while ago, I heard, John, from the Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Mikhail Fedorov, who said some of those individuals appeared to have bullet holes in the back of their heads. We know the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense says that the bodies of four or five naked women was, were also found on the ground about 20 kilometers outside of Kiev. It appears some uh, may have been attempted to be burned. Uh, a local MP, Oleksiy Gonochenko, pardon me, spoke to us last hour on the ground from Bucha describing what he saw. You can see the car which is burned down completely. I saw the cars which also burned down with the bodies of people inside them and one car with a child who was burned down in the car. It's absolutely awful. It's a real genocide which, and the war crimes which were committed by Russian army and Russian forces. Now, Ukrainian officials today are also citing witness reports accusing Russian forces of using children as human shields as they retreated in order to avoid fire and protect their equipment. The country's attorney general says they are gathering a dossier of claims saying they plan to hand that information over to the International Criminal Court. They say they have seen instances of this happening in several areas, including Sumy, Kiev, and Chernihiv. So we will, of course, uh, continue to watch for that. CBC, however, has not been able to independently verify those claims. John. Natalie Collada, thanks for this. With more on this, we're joined by Andrei Soldatov. Now, he is a Russian investigative journalist and an expert on Russian security services. The West's assessment of Putin's war is that it's not going as planned. Russia's forces seem weaker and less prepared, and the Ukrainian resistance is stronger than expected. So, thank you for joining us, Mr. Soldatov. What are you hearing about your sources in Russia? Well, well I'm hearing a lot of confusion. Uh, people in the security services uh, seem to be extremely confused about what is going on in Ukraine, and the military also. Uh, do not understand several basic things about this war. There is still some strange elements we nobody actually can understand. The chain of command is unclear. There is no one commander of the Russian troops who is actually in charge of the situation on the battlefield. We have only the Minister of Defense and the Chief of the General Staff, and even the Minister of Defense disappeared for two weeks and re-emerged just last week. So, what is going on in terms of the chain of command and uh, Putin's uh, control, or maybe I should ask, Putin's understanding of what's going on in Ukraine? Well, it looks like, while Putin doesn't actually understand completely, it doesn't have a picture, a real picture, of what is going on in Ukraine. Uh, he's been angry at his uh, intelligence agencies 
almost immediately after the war started. And, but his way of fixing things was to start repressions against his security services. So he placed several people under house arrest and he launched some criminal investigations, but it doesn't help. And nothing actually is improving in terms of uh, the chain of command. We have lots of uh, generals, I mean, the Russian uh, troops have lots of uh, generals killed. But again, who is in charge of uh, the joint group of forces of the Russian troops in Ukraine is still unclear. As you well know, the Russian uh, armed forces are huge. There were as many as 200,000 troops on the border of Ukraine for quite some time before uh, they invaded the country. Uh, presumably a high level of training, uh, certainly plenty of equipment. We know that. Uh, what has gone wrong with, uh, from the Russians' point of view, uh, their invasion of Ukraine? Well, it looks like it's the problem started immediately after the tanks and troops were sent into Ukraine. Uh, the initial plan seems to be that this operation would take maybe one day, maybe two days. And that is why lots of the National Guard troops were sent into Ukraine. And these people, they just do, don't have any military training to engage in a tank battles, for instance. And we, after that, we saw lots of columns of the National Guard being completely destroyed by the Ukrainian forces. Uh, but nevertheless, for some mysterious reasons, the initial plan was still OK, and the Russian commanders, they kept sending these columns uh, into Ukraine without proper protection and defense. And that is why we got, well, the Russian troops got so many casualties. Uh, there is uh, obvious problems of communications between different agencies and different uh, the regiments on the battlefield. And actually, that is an explanation why we have uh, the Russian troops have so many uh, high-level commanders killed because they cannot get real tactical intelligence what is going on. They are going to the front line and get killed. We only have about 30 seconds left, but I do want to get you to comment on what we're hearing uh, in view of the appears to be the Russian withdrawal, at least from the areas around Kyiv, in terms of uh, we're getting reports of brutality, uh, civilians yeah. tied up and shot, uh, uh, women uh, being raped, uh, children potentially being used as uh, human shields to uh, aid in the Russians' uh, departure. Uh, do you put uh, credibility in those reports? Unfortunately, I do. And as a Russian, I am completely appalled by what I saw. And I have many friends, journalists, who are right now in Kiev. And I know that I can trust their reportings. And the only way to explain is that, is that the Russian troops now, the, the morale in the Russian troops are extremely, extremely low. So just a month after the, the war started, they're doing these horrible, absolutely unspeakable things. Andre, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Russian investigative journalist Andre Soldatov in.